This is Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the July 8th meeting of the Long Beach Building Commission. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. Yes. All right. Uh, I will call the meeting to order. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Long Beach Building Commission on July, what is today, 8th? July 8th, 2022. Uh, first order of business would be approving the June minutes. Uh, everybody should have gotten a copy of those. Uh, Honor sent them out, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, any additions or corrections to those? I think the motion will approve. Second. Uh, I didn't hear a second. Did somebody second that? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, aye. Or do, uh, we have to do, do we have to do roll call, Bob, because I'm not there? Yeah, actually, we do. So I'm here, I'll do the roll call since I'm here. So Larry Wong? Yeah, uh, yes. Bob, sir, I'm an aye. No, no, this is, this is a uh, two people minutes. Right. And Bob, sir, say aye. All right, I'm an eye. That's all. I'm sorry. Oh, gee. I got I got there. I was not at the last meeting, so I'll stay. And I, for some reason, my name is just so I'll just abstain myself. All right, so we have five people in favor, two abstentions. All right. So that passes. Uh, next order of business would be the commissioner's report. Uh, we had 16 permits with construction costs of $250,635, which generated fees of $2,364. Uh, we received 119, or I'm sorry, 109 calls on permits and or information requests. Uh, Lou, have you got your site visits and inspections? Yeah, 62 site visits and uh, 14 inspections. Any questions or comments on the commissioner's report? Okay, being none, we'll move right into old business. Uh, first item is 22... Uh, 21 Oakenwald, that's the, or, yeah, 2211, sorry, my eyes aren't working right. Uh, Oakenwald, that is the pool shed. They are at the BZA now, so uh, we'll just leave it here until they get a determination from the BZA. Uh, any comments on that? Uh, being none, we'll move to the next item, which is 2216. The beach chairs or beach stairs. Uh, since our last meeting, uh, Chris has contacted the general counsel for the DNR in Indianapolis and just received an email response today saying that she was off and that she will uh, get a hold of Chris hopefully next week after she has a chance to talk to. Uh, the people that would be in charge of this at the DNR. I had also sent a request to Marquita Shepherdson, who is um, with the, the DNR water management area. And uh, she sent me an email back uh, two weeks ago saying that she was going, they were going to discuss this internally and that she would get back to me as soon as she can. Uh, I don't know that there's anything else we can do with these stairs. They don't, it, it appears that the DNR is not responding to individual homeowners who contact them for uh, permits. So if my question and, and Chris was, Chris's was the same, I'm not speaking for Chris, but uh, what are you guys going to do? Are you going to require permits? Are you not going to require permits? So they just haven't made a decision yet. And according to our ordinance, we require that there would be either a permit or uh, an approval or 
we're not, you know, some type of communication from the DNR. Uh, I don't really know that there's much else we can do since we've contacted the two highest people that we're aware of. Any questions or comments on that? Yeah, those two highest people, neither of them responded. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry, Pete. It's interesting. Did, did, did either of those two people respond at all? Yes, the, the general counsel responded to uh, Chris just today. I don't know if anybody, everybody saw that email that he sent out this morning. Uh, but uh, if you didn't see it, I can re-forward or I can forward it to everybody. And my response, I did get a response from Marquita Shepherdson, uh, and she does have one individual uh, above her, which Pete was that Heaven Street that I think you would had some communication with. I know I did before, but he's been replaced. Uh, and it sounded, Marquita said that she was going to, uh, they were going to discuss it internally and get back to us. And uh, that was basically the same response that Chris got. So they did respond, but not giving us a, an answer. I think in general, in terms of the signals, I think we got an email from the person uh, who suggested that a number of seawalls have been grandfathered. I am not aware of that. My understanding is that all the wooden stairs uh, on the beach were destroyed by that spring storm a couple of years ago. Our ordinance has been in place since then. So any stairs that do not follow our ordinance right now, do not, that, that do not meet our ordinances, are in violation. Okay, well, that was the next one that I was going to add to this. Um, well, Bob, I, I, I think the ones that were grandfathered in do meet our ordinance. Stand at those ones down at, they met our, met our ordinance, even though they were built years ago. Yeah, anything that's wooden doesn't meet our ordinance. I guess that's, I guess that's the plan. Uh, there was one that I was adding to this after you guys, after I sent this out yesterday, uh, we got a letter from uh, the, the owners at 1960 Lakeshore Drive, and it's the same situation that you just brought up, Bob. Their stairs were there uh, before the storms, and um, they removed them and now want to put them back, but they are fabricated out of wood. So it, I guess... In keeping with Bob, your point and John's, we need to make sure that we're doing everything according to our ordinances and across the board. Um, Lou and I talked about, we met this week and we had some discussion about the number of wooden stairs that are on the beach or that were there before or have been constructed. Most of them, from what I can see from the pictures, have been newly constructed. Um, Lou, I don't know if you want to chime in on that. Well, yeah, the, uh, the guy in 1905 is saying stairs have been there for years and years, and he took them down based solely on the letter that uh, we circulated to everybody on Shore Drive, saying if they had wood stairs, they were going to be cited. So he took the stairs down, and of course he's got multiple neighbors that didn't take stairs down, um, and he feels like um, he got the ride of the deal by the fact that he took the stairs down. Now he can't put them back up. So let the neighbors take their stairs down. Anybody else have any comments about this? Uh, we, we need to, as I say, just be uh, fair across the board. I don't know if fair is the right term, but uh, our ordinance does state that stairs have to be metal, uh, meaning aluminum or steel, to meet the ordinance. Um, and Bob, I do, is, you, I think, are probably the most familiar with the stair ordinance, maybe Pete. And uh, if you would just touch on it again about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Uh, 
I think there's a lot of people that would say that their stairs weathered the storm and they've been there for years and years. I, I don't, I, I know a couple of people that said that, but um, I can't say that's true across the board. Well, if there were the stairs, they were wiped out. I don't understand how they new wooden stairs, old wooden stairs could, could remain when the water was as high as it was. So I, I don't buy that argument. Those metal stairs, I can understand. But wooden stairs would have been wiped out at that time. Most wooden stairs are, the, I, when I was up and down the beach at the high water, which was two years ago, uh in keeping with Pete or in, in, I'm agreeing with Pete any stairs from probably stop 17 east all the way up to stop 31 any wooden stairs were smashed and gone um it, there may be some rare exception that I'm not aware of but uh, because the water was up they just they took them down I mean they were actually decks that floated down to Washington Park Beach that were constructed, one in particular was illegal, but um, wooden stairs, anybody that had, had had them on the beach before the storms didn't have them after. So, uh, and I think, uh, and actually Nick is on the call right now or on the Zoom right now. Uh, Nick, I think you took them out before the storms, didn't you? Uh, you're muted, Nick, you need to unmute. Okay, I took those up because we were with a letter that was given to all homeowners, I believe, not just us, to take them up. So we did. We didn't want to get fined every day. It was the letter was stating fine per day for having the wooden stairs on the beach. So we took ours up. And, you know, I think we're getting the raw end. When I go up and down the beach, maybe multiple wooden stairs up and down the beach. I don't know any homeowners up there. I just took my own business, but uh, sure. we have a lot of old people at this house that we own and we're, we're using a aluminum ladder to go up and down. It's not safe. Okay, thanks, Nick. So I think the bottom line is, is Nick followed the ordinance. He did the right thing. And because we haven't been able to enforce the ordinance properly because of technical delays, legal delays. He kind of got the run a stick by following the rules, basically. And I think, so what I need to do is I need to talk to Chris and we need to get things moving as far as enforcing our stair ordinance. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably a pretty fair assessment. This being a case where the owner took more, uh, the amount of measures to remove a perfectly legal stair and then uh, to prevent damage from the storm and means it's all same after the storm, where would uh, you be required to put a new metal stair in if that's the case? Yes, that's correct. That's what our ordinance states. And uh, I, I agree with Bob. I think we need to get Chris to give us the parameters of what we can and can't do as far as the ordinance is concerned. Uh, unfortunately, Chris is on vacation and he's not here, but um, both Bob and I have communicated with him that we will direct any questions to him after the meeting uh, by email and uh, get some direction from him. And I think this is probably the one of the biggest questions we have you know, Nick, I know that doesn't solve your immediate problem, but the hope is that we can get the answer from Chris. Um, I, doubt, I doubt we will get it today. We will probably get it beginning of next week. Can I say uh, one No. Sure, Nick, go ahead. Okay, I get this rectified, Mr. Brinktech, and we haven't heard it and the summer's going past. <laughs> we understand that we're, we're just, we have to, as a, as a government body, we just have to make sure that we're doing things according to Hoyle. And the, the, I think the best thing for us is to consult with our, the, the town's attorney as to how we should uh, act on this. 
Uh, I know that doesn't solve your problem, but uh, it's. I think that's the only thing that we can do. And uh, as I said, we'll get this off to Chris right away, and hopefully we'll have an answer for you and everybody else uh, next week by midweek. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Nick. So who's going to follow up with uh, the DNR? Uh, both... Both Chris and I are following up with the DNR. Uh, on, on the, it's, I don't know how we can do anything if, if we have in our ordinance that it's, a permit is required, and they did give permits out, and now, uh, you know, with the, with the sand back and the water receding, everybody wants stairs. So we have to have some solution. I think our ordinance is fair with the 42 inch stairs and most people are uh, waiting for that DNR decision that I have talked to who requested stairs. And I can tell you that there's at least six or eight people that I have talked to directly about the stairs and they wanna put them in and they actually have people lined up to do it. But uh, I told them that we can't do that unless we either have a permit from them or a letter from the DNR. And the DNR was not forthcoming with that information. The local uh, rep for the DNR is Steve Davis at our office here. And he just basically stonewalled, I think, Pat Clifford, and, which is why we went down to Indianapolis to try to get an answer from people that are uh, higher up the food chain. But we're both expecting answers. and. It, it, Chris got an answer that said that she would respond to him uh, within a week and said if she, he didn't hear from her by next week, that he should uh, ping her. And my response from that I received from Marquita Shepherdson was that they were discussing, they were going to discuss it internally and uh, get back to us. Have they, have they expressed any problem with our ordinance, the 42-inch ordinance? Uh, no, they haven't, Pete. And I sent that to Marquita. And again, not speaking for Chris, but I, I, I believe he sent it to uh, the general counsel. And there was nothing, nothing came back to either one of us as far as that we had issues with our ordinance. Well, if the DNR is not going to give approval, I mean, if this just gets kicked down the road like it's probably going to do, then I think we ought to amend the ordinance and say, uh, as long as they satisfy our requirements with the 42 inches and the metal stairs and so on, uh, and then they could notify the DNR that this is what they're going to do, then that should be sufficient. And then it's up to the DNR at some point to say, no, you can't do it. But if they aren't going to respond or anything, you know, these folks are going to be left Hold, hold up in the air for the next two summers. And um, yeah, you know, they, this is a pretty simple question. If they won't give a, an approval, then, then we ought to amend our ordinance. That's my, my suggestion. Any other comments about this issue? It did sound from Chris's email like he was going to hear from this gal within the week. So yes. I would. If we don't hear from them, then then Okay, uh, since there's no more comments on that, let's move to the next item, which is. Gosh, I can't even read my own handwriting for God's sake. Six, uh, the 3002. Yeah, 3002 Northmore, which is the retaining wall that they want to put on Lakeshore Drive. And we asked for a site plan, and we haven't received that yet. What they had sent to us was a plat with some notations of where the wall was going to go. But it, it, there's we have to have something that tells us definitively: is the wall going to be behind the the in the right of way? Is it going to be adhered to the 15 foot setback? And we haven't gotten anything else yet. So. I mean, we can leave this on the agenda f uh, till uh, for forever, or we can. Uh, I could take it off next month if we don't see anything from them. 
Larry, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, did we agree in the last meeting that uh, this is a Northmore, Northmore uh, address, so therefore the front of the house is on Northmore, and therefore where they're talking about, that's the back of the house, which would be a 20-foot setback. Did we agree on that? You know, I, I can't remember, to be honest with you, what Chris said about that. I'll, I'll run it by him. I think that was pretty much the agreement of everybody on the board, uh, if anybody else wants to chime in. But uh, I will check with Chris. Okay, next up is um, 1613 Indianapolis. We did receive the paperwork that we asked for. Uh, the executed documents were sent to Chris. Uh, Chris approved them. So that puts the application back in our lap. Uh, and um, Lou, you might want to chime in as well, but they meet all the requirements uh and met our request to uh, have a covenant drawn up and chris approved that larry yeah uh, i went through it not not that i really know how to interpret all of it but i just have a simple question that if they decide to put anything on the properties that are in, in michigan city are they going to review with us first and are they going to abide by the total 35%? Uh, Joe, you know, I, I would ask Chris that question from my reading of it was that they would not, number one, sell those lots um, individually or sell it off so that then they would be non-conforming and that the only thing that they were going to build was going to be on the portion of the lots that were in Long Beach. Uh, specifically, I don't know if that your question is answered in that covenant that they've sent off. I would suggest that to, to not punish this homeowner who happens to own a lot that's part of Long Beach, part of Michigan State, the total coverage, both lots, is what we should consider. Not right. just, uh, no, I, 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 maybe you're not understanding me. I'm not. I'm, I'm combining the total for both of all this property. I have no problem with that. Okay. The question that I'm asking, though, is if all of a sudden he decides to build something on the Michigan City property, are they going to come to us first and double check that we're still in the 35% for the totality of all these properties? That's my question. Uh, they would have to because Michigan City has said to them that any building issues would be handled by the town of Long Beach. And I have talked to the homeowner, Joe, and that is their intention, that they feel that they live in Long Beach and they're going to deal with Long Beach. So I'd make a motion to approve this permit. I'll second. Uh, Bob, you want to do the roll call? Aye. 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 Yeah, sorry. Aye. 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 Did Joe vote in favor of this? Yes. <laughs> Better go buy a lottery ticket. Larry, I think it's the water, it's the water that I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next up is the 1900 Lakeshore Drive, the fence and the pool. Um, I, I'm going to hand this off to Lou. They sent a re revised proposal in that was has still had an eight foot fence, and it was on the property line, and the fence extended to the 106 line, and our ordinance uh, won't allow either one of those. Uh, Lou, you want to uh, touch on this one? Yeah, they have um, corrected uh, the, the current application, the amended application to comply with uh, all of our ordinances. There are going to be six inches, more than six inches inside the property line. Um, uh, the fence is going to be um, five feet high. Um, there's going to be no fence any further than the 106 line. Um, uh, 
as far as I can tell, they're completely compliant with this um, application for a building permit. I make a motion to approve the permit. Can I can I ask a question first? Okay, I'll, I'll wait for your motion. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Okay, so I made the motion, Joy seconded. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, I have I have a question. And it's the same same thing that I've asked for a long time on this property is that I've never seen uh, the location, and I, I think I mispronounced it last time, of the, uh, of the septic or the septic tank. And there's uh, some information on a previous survey, and it never said that uh, anybody that would, would survey Okay, maybe we'll get an answer here. I see the fella coming to the screen. Uh, that's number one. And then number two, I, I just wanted to make sure, and I think he did, that in the front of the house on the side, that they only have about five feet, five something feet. They don't have a uh, the six foot setback. And I'm not complaining about that, but I just want to make sure that the line is being drawn properly. Go ahead. Hey, Chris Walsh with Topi Areas for 1900 Lakeshore Drive. Um, on the submitted drawings, it actually does show, because I went to the Port County Health Department, um, and on that drawing, it does show the septic clean out, the exact location of it. We had conflicting information when we had applied for the patio permit. I don't know if you recall that. And so when I went to the Port County Health Department, I actually we dug it up and we noted it with pictures and measurements. And um, that is when we got the approval from the LaPorte County Health Department for the location of that septic. And that, that we then brought back to you all for approval we did the patio work. Um, with regards to the property line setback, yes, on the um, one side it is only five feet eight, the property line is five feet eight. And we're noting that the fence is within six inches still inside that, on that side of the property. I, uh, if, if we're communicating, that you're saying when uh, Mr. Wilson went uh, to the DNR. No, not the. I went. I, the, I, Chris okay, Walsh. And, and you went. And what did you what did you present to them to show you where the tanks were? Yeah. So I had physical pictures and uh, tape measurements. Uh, oh, from who? That I took myself when I presented, and that's on this set of drawings. Right, and that's when we adjusted the patio layout. They said, as long as you don't put the patio on top of this clean out, you are fine. And that's when they approved it, that then moved the patio um, permit through. So those, that physical measurement I physically had and presented in person to the LaPorte County Health Department. You, which they approved. you physically had, how did you locate where, where the- We dug them up. So we, we, we excavated the soil and then we found the top. And from that, we pulled three dimensions from the existing post of the deck. Um, and we located that on a base map, which is uh, what's submitted here with this set of drawings as well. And we presented that to the LaPorte County Health Department. So, so the, the, in the other diagram, and I don't have it with me, and maybe you got it earlier, that there's also showing that they also have some other tanks that aren't by the by the deck. Did you are you aware of those? Um, I do not know, except for on the survey where they've been located. Like those that have been, yeah. And, but when you read the survey, the sur the survey that's on there does say Existing that it was there was. because Mr. Wilson provided that information um, for the dry well purposes. Correct, not the septic. Well, we're right. Well, I'm looking for both the septics and the dry wells. And where are the dry wells? Do you know where they're at? Um, as, as far as the survey is located with regards to this, it is at outside of uh, uh, outside of 10 feet from one side of the property line and inside of six feet on the other property line. Um, I, okay, I'm, I'm trying to say that there, and I don't know if we all have it, we had it at one time that there was a sketch that was given to us 
they had a couple dry wells over by where the fence might be going. But that's so I don't have, I don't have it in front of me, so I guess I can't say anything about it right now. But there Chris, is do you hear Chris, this is Larry. Do you have a, a copy of that drawing that you can share on the screen? Uh, do you want me to hold it up to something? <laughs> no, I'm in a I'm in a PDF. Uh, yeah, it's it's in the it's in the drawing set. Um, okay, I, I'm going to look for it right now. It's in that email, and it, the revised version was sent, I think, two days ago, and it's in, it's in that drawing set that has Willoughby, Adamski, and, and the Deanna sent out, Larry. Okay, I'm going to look it up, and then I'll get it so we can look uh, at yeah. it, so we don't have any issues here. Chris, the, the, the issue... As much as as much as I uh, trust the the Port County Health Department, we've had situations in the past, and on this particular property, I saw I went to see Doyle myself, did the, the survey and laid it out. The issues that we have are that um, first of all, the contractor, that's the original contractor, he was the one who placed the location of the various. Um, septic and dry wells. So if you say you have excavated just over the septic tank, correct, it still remains where the dry wells are. And, and they also have to comply with the 10 foot and the and no coverage and all that sort of thing. So if you can verify that you've physically gone and located those, that would be good. Um, I, I don't know how for a fence that how we go about doing that. But I'm, I don't understand that. So if you would just guide me as to how they would be located. This application is just for a fence. So why, why do we have to know where the dry wells are? We don't do that on any other fence application. They still have to comply with the fence and the posts that are dug. That, that's that's the issue with the drywalls and the and septic system. So if it's if it's not interfering with the drywalls, that's fine. But don't we have photographs of where the two drywalls were and where the septic um, lid is? Um, yeah, you have. Uh, there's documentation of where the septic lid is located and. Uh, there are photographs that are in that shared drawing file that Damsky and Willoughby uh, uh, have of anything that has been excavated that Tobias has come across during the course of construction. When we have, we're digging for trees that are the distance between the property line and where the fence is going, we've come across no <clears throat> indication of dry well or proximity thereof. And those holes were 25 gallon holes. Um, which are approximately 22 inches wide and about 22 inches deep. Um, and so that would give some sort of indicator. I think that when we were digging those, we may have come across them. But as we did those, those trees were located, as I said, um, outside of the scope, the fence goes between the property line and those trees. We would have come across something in the wall excavating. Given that this permit is just to put in the fence, could we approve this permit with stipulation that we confirm that none of the posts in the fence are going to rupture any of those dry wells? I'll second that. Okay, I have a question. We're talking about a fence on the east portion of the property? West. West. Which one? Well, both sides. It's both sides. Over uh, I've got the revised plan up here. I don't know that, if you guys can uh, see it. Is there anything on the, is there a fence going to be on the north side? No, there's nothing. This is a this is an older version. This is what we submitted with the wool permit. I mean, with the paving permit. Um, but uh, the most current submission, the fence stops at the view protection line on both sides of the property walk up to it and show you what you want. So, yeah, this is the yeah. most recent that I have, Chris. Unfortunately, this is the last one I got from Deanna, or we got from Deanna, which 
I can tell you the date that she sent it to us. June, June 21st. I have no further questions. Well, Larry, there's a motion and a second. I don't see anybody else wanting to discuss. But okay. So make a motion. Do I second it? And again, it had to do with that. Just to repeat, uh, who's going to confirm that none of those sun sets are going to interfere with those drive lines? So, Pete? Okay. I approve. Larry? Yes. Yes. Ken? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Joe. Yes. Joe. No. Okay, let's move on to uh, new business. First one up is 1922 Oriole Trail. Uh, they want to put a shed in. Lou, if you want to speak to that. Yeah. Um, let just if I could back up for a second here. We have um, some. A couple other addresses here um, that were BZA approved that uh, have resubmitted applications to us that technically are our business. Um, if I could just mention these three here, uh, sure. Roll on them. Uh, 2208 Chastleton um, was uh, McCusker's um, shed. Um, wanted uh, variants from uh, the side setback and the rear setback being the alley back there. He was allowed that by the BZA. Um, and has reapplied um, and uh, nothing's changed. Um, so uh, we can discuss this, but tonight we, we can approve it. Uh, is there a motion to approve this one? Right. Which one is, is this the shed? Yeah. Yes, yeah, 2208. I would think that we're a little late because uh, the shed was put in a couple of days ago. McCusker, yeah. You didn't see. You didn't see the one that the one that's abutting that uh, right around the corner from my house. You know, there's a there's a shed installed already. The one where he's got a jumping. Well, that's jack. not good. He's got a jumping jack in that same property. Yeah, and they and they, they installed the shed there a couple of days ago. Well, having been at that BZA meeting, I know Mr. McCusker was told that he needed building commission approval to do that. So he was. I think uh, citations in order. Sorry, but yeah, that shouldn't happen. Okay. Okay. Are there, were there any other issues with this shed that it needs to come for further approval? Just because they allow. It to be built in a certain location doesn't mean there might not be another issue. Well, I, he had received he had received a variance last year for the size. Wasn't that correct, Lou? He was actually turned down on a variance for where he wanted to put the shed, and then he went right. back to yeah, a different plan. Yes, that's right. But when they when they denied the the Placement, they didn't they approve the size though? No, there's no good on right. the BZA, but they approved it all with all with the setback. Yeah, I we, right. we didn't we didn't approve anything, but we went to the BZA, so that means no, I didn't mean that we approved it, but the BZA gave the variance. Well, it, Let's not belabor it, Lou. So you'll issue a citation, and then he'll have to bring his stuff to us uh, with the stuff that was approved by the BZA, just like everybody else has to. And when I look at the findings and decisions, it clearly states that they needed a permit. Right. Um, all right, Lou. Which which one you got next? Um, I've got uh, 2738 floral, uh, which we heard in June, um, $25,000 worth of uh, deck and railing. Um, I looked at the job. Um, they're putting in really expensive railing. Um, I don't, I'm not sure it's Trex. It might be Timber Tech, I guess. Um, and there's no doubt that this job could cost $25,000. And, and, okay. and it's a lot of work. So, um, <laughs> 
upon um, reviewing it. Um, it uh, it, 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 yeah, it's a remove and replace. So, it, yeah, how about a, exactly. we have a motion to approve it? Is there a motion to approve this? This is not one that has there. No, no variance at all. Before we do that, we really need to officially vote on it because we have a dozen. I think it was Larry. I'd like to make a motion we approve the customer. Yeah. Remove and replace. We, we, Lou and I should be able to approve that. So I think we can move on. Um, what's up next, Lou? Oh, Larry, can you hear me, Larry? Uh, I can barely hear you, Bob. Wow. Uh, so the customer was tweeting that we need to vote on that. So we got a motion and a second. And I had a motion and a second. I can't hear you, Bob, but I, I think what you're asking is is to take a vote on McCuskers. Uh, yeah. I, th I think before we would do that, we would have to have him come back to us with the findings from the BZA and his permit application. And then Lou, the directive was, my understanding was <clears throat> he was to issue a citation. I did have a June 28th application from McCusker um, uh, with the BZA approval attached to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That was not understood by anybody. Yeah, we do We do have that. But there's definitely, Lou just said on June 28th, he submitted a building permit application and he also submitted the BZA findings. That's right. fine, but we never, but we never approved it. That's why I made the motion to approve and can't second. So we're approving this now after he's got a citation? In well, the citation is for building it before we approve it, but we can't approve it now. He still gets the citation. Right. Right. All right, so Bob, you want to take a roll call on that? Question. Are all the other... We're not hearing anything on this end. It is. Anybody hear me on this? Yeah. I yeah, I can hear you, Pete. Okay. Question is: um, Are there any other potential issues with this permit? If they had submitted the permit to us. Is everything on that permit valid? I don't. I've never reviewed it yet because it wasn't on the agenda. And that's the issue. The process is, as the BZA has indicated, that when a application goes to the BZA and it is approved, it must come back to the Building Commission to make sure that all elements, in addition to the one, the very description at the bottom of the application, um, he complies with the 1% um, of the size of, of the property and um, the coverage. Um, and these were things that we would have sent him back to the BZA had they been um, not compliant. The only thing that was not compliant about the shed situation was the setbacks. Does anybody have a clue what the size of the set shed is now? Has anybody seen? Nobody's seen it, so how do we even know what the size is? It's 10 by 11 and a half. How do you been there, Lou, and you measured it? No, it's on, it's on the application here. I'm talking about what was delivered and what was installed. Well, it's a little bit of a catch-22 here, or a cart before the horse. We, we, if the application came in on the 28th uh, of June with which is proper that he would send it in with this stuff from the BZA, we wouldn't be able to physically measure the shed. So that being said, I think Bob's point is we should approve, the, or Bob's motion is, is that we should approve the permit based on the application that he sent in. 
and issue a citation because he built it before we approved it. Uh, I mean, if there's any question that we should not approve it, I, I haven't heard anything that would say that. Uh, if the shed is not the size, I mean, we can go there and physically measure it, but it's a little bit backwards. So if the shed is not the size that was included in the application, then he would have to take it down or go back to the BZA and ask, take it down and then go back to the BZA and ask them for a variance to, to change the size. Um, so there's two issues, or actually three. Approval of the permit that was presented. Two, a citation because he put it in before approval. Three, is the size according to what he built. I think that, is that your question, Joe and Pete? Yeah, um, like you're saying, the horse piece, the horse in front of whatever. But uh, yeah, it's just confusing that something has been installed already. And yeah, we, we can wait and measure it later. I, I understand that. And, you know, as per the uh, resolution that we passed, or the uh, policy that we passed last meeting, if that shed was built larger than the plan, then he is in violation. That's yes. It. He should get a letter from Chris giving him 10 days to rectify that situation or daily fine start. Well, hopefully that's not the case. Yes. And that, that would be with any per that, that would be true with any permit that we issue. If somebody comes in, regardless of whether it's a BZA approval or if it's just a straight permit. If somebody wants to say, I want to put a new deck on the back of my house, and I tell you guys it's a 10 by 20, and then you guys say, okay, you know, you meet all the requirements, and then Lou happens to stop by and sees that I put a 20 by 20 deck on, I would be in violation of my permit. And that, that, that holds true for every permit that we issue, not just the McCusker shed. So, so Kathy, what's going on here? So this uh, the situation here is that he's put the shed out. Um, he's obviously got stuff in it. Why don't we just wait till the next meeting, um, have Lou measure it and check the setbacks, and if everything's kosher, we approve it. It's not like he, there's any inconvenience for him now. I I think that's a fine idea, Pete. And everybody, Bob, you want to withdraw your motion? Withdraw my motion, then let's just make sure it's on the agenda for next meeting. Okay, we'll do. Uh, do you have one more, Lou? Yeah, I do. Back to what, 2738 floral um, uh, deck replacement, annual replacement um, that we heard. Um, when I checked out the uh, job, um, and it appears to be what it, it's applied for. Uh, remove and replace. That's correct. Yeah, I think you and I can approve that as long as we're here. If anybody has any questions or comments, or if you want to vote it through, let's when, have a motion. When did, when did we receive the building permit application? I, I don't seem to have, I don't seem to have it. Lou, you got it on June 20th. Any other questions on this? Comments? As long as we've gone this far, let's have, can we have a motion to approve it or deny it? Motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Larry? Yes. I mean, yes. Ken? Yeah. Yes. John? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Joe? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lewis, you got any? Yeah, one more. Um, 2003 Lawndale. This is the uh, Yoga job that uh, went to the BZA. Um, we uh, had questions about uh, the coverage measurements that were kind of screwed up by the architect. 
Um, I went out with the contractor and measured um, all of the coverage, and uh, they complied um, at like 34% of coverage. Um, that's what we, what we were waiting for was um, checking their coverage, which I did. And uh, otherwise, they're awaiting the permit. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion. Any other discussion? All vote. Aye. Eric? Yes. Ken? Yes. John? Yes. Joy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Okay, let's move on to new business. Pete, or uh, excuse me, Lou, is that it for the the uh, the hangers? Right, that's it for that's it for old business. Excuse, okay, excuse me. Conditions to new business. Can I ask a quick question? Then? I I thought when you started about the BZA, you're going to go through all three of them. That you only wanted to go through the first one. I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't hear when, when you started with the BZA approvals, I thought we were going to go through the other two. And the other two? Because there were three of them that were approved. I thought, oh, I'm sorry, that I, I, I okay. misunderstood. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, uh, Arlene Tangle. Um, I misunderstood. But, which is already under new business, so I, I didn't bother uh, putting it in here. That's 2311 Hazel Team, uh, turning a deck into a three season room. Um, and uh, the BZA has allowed the non-conformity because it's a lot less than 12,000 square feet. Um, um, and uh, yeah, again, BZA approved it. It's a pretty simple job. Yeah. Again, the address is 2311 Hazel Team. Right, it's line, it's line item number 12. Yes. So I'll make a motion to approve it since we've already discussed it. I'll second. Any other discussion? Pete? Aye. Aye. Larry? Aye. 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 Joy? Aye. Joe? Aye. Okay. Uh, let's, let's move on to new. Larry? Hold on. Yeah. Lou, if you wanted to go to the other one, there's a third one. Was it there one from 2021's uh, Silver Tip? Correct. Uh, good old house up on Silver Tip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's under new business. Yeah, that's under new business. That's why I didn't. Okay. All right. Let's move on to 1922 Oriole Trail. That's another shed. Um, Lou, you want to touch on that one? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. What was the uh, address? 19 1922 Oriole. Right. A shed. Um, yeah, this is uh, a shed um, uh, up on that uh, um, left arm of uh, Memorial Trail. Um, we uh, uh, had a hard time getting a survey. They didn't find a survey. Um, the guy wants to put the shed in the back uh, corner um, of uh, his huge lot. I mean, way under 1%. Um, and uh, 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 everything else complies. Uh, we have a motion to approve or deny. The question is how close is the proposed shed to the lot, lot, lot lines? The lot line with my 25 foot tape. Okay, and how tall is it? Oh, it's short. It's, uh, um, it's nowhere near 18 feet. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Sir. The only question I have with this one, Lou, which I mentioned to you earlier this morning, uh, they did provide a survey just that right at the end, and then they want it back. And I just said, that's not our policy. I mean, you have to put the stuff in the folder. So all, all I was asking, Lou, is that they, they should just make a copy of it and provide it to us. You don't, you don't provide stuff and then take it back because we need it for our, for, for our records. It's a, it's a minor thing, but yeah. that's what we're going to have. Lou, would you convey that to them that if that we need to have a copy of the survey 
you know, certainly yeah. they can take it back and go and get it copied at Reprographic Arts and then return it to us. But we yeah, have we'll to do. have the copy of it. Okay, thanks. Uh, next up is... We need, to, we need to vote on that. Oh, right? sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Roll call. Thank 22. This is on that a single lot. Is that what's on? Yes. And there's a large lot next door that is not going in that lot. There are more than just six or No, from the survey, um, I know that it's going on there a lot. Hi. Larry. Hi. Ken. John. Hi. Joy. Hi. Joe. Uh, okay, uh, we'll move up. Next is 2021 uh, Golden Gate. Um, this is uh, uh, Deb Dueling's house uh, that she wants to uh, take a load bearing wall out. Uh, we, we requested a um, uh, you know, structural engineer um, um, stamped prints on this. We got that. Um, we were having a hard time with uh, the contractor who um, is uh, selling um, workers out of um, Illinois um, that are registered um, in Illinois with uh, the uh, uh, workers comp there. Um, so the question becomes, do we need them to be registered in Indiana even though they're registered in Illinois? Yes. Well, they need to register with the town, yes, as far as the workman's comp, workman's comp goes. Uh, if they have workman's compensation insurance, it would cover them if they're working here, unless there would be an exclusion, pardon me, an exclusion for that. Uh, I would, to be frank, I would think that the guy would want to have his workers here covered under Indiana workman's comp. It's probably a third of the cost of what Illinois is. Anyway, uh, if his certificate of insurance lists workers' compensation, uh, that's fine. But if his subs are all, if he's a, a sole proprietor and that type of thing, and he's got subs on the job, those subs have to be registered here as well. Okay, good. That answers my question. Um, we can't do it until the subs are uh, registered. So, um, okay. I, I guess we can, uh, pending registration of the subs. We're supposed to wait and make them wait a whole other month. Well, I guess that would be anybody have any discussion or points on that? Can, can, can you? Yeah. <laughs> Typically, where the uh, individual workers live, is where the contractor pays the compensation. So if he had, uh, if he is a Illinois contractor and he has uh, workers that are in Michigan or Indiana, typically we would pay uh, the compensation in those states where they live. That's what we've uh, incurred. Are there any issues with the bond? We require them to have a, a post of bond. I believe we have that. I'll have to check with Dan on it. I'm sorry? I believe we have a bond from this uh, uh, Ridgewood, Ridgewood Builders, so private. Right? Of course, we'd have to have that before we can, you know, issue a permit. Right. It, it, the bottom line for this particular job and it's actually not just this job it's all the jobs in general or permits in general i should say uh as we've discussed before th there's a, a propensity for contractors to say that they're sole sole proprietors so that they can skirt the workman's comp rules as well as the tax the, the employment taxes uh michigan city as well as laporte county and i believe laporte city uh, have cracked down on that. So this is a prime example of it. So somebody comes here, registers with the town and says, in this particular instance, I am a sole proprietor. And I think they, Lou, correct me if I'm wrong, 
sent a letter with their from their insurance agent that says that this individual is a sole proprietor. That that letter really doesn't mean much to 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 me. I don't know if it means much to anybody else, but the the employment rules are pretty straightforward. And one of the biggest problems in the construction industry is people pay their employees cash. Cash meaning not necessarily greenbacks, but buy a check without taxes and that type of thing. And what it does is I'm sure you've seen the ads in the local paper, is it's it bastardizes the whole process. Every one of those individuals that works is not covered under liability insurance, is not covered under workman's comp insurance, is not covered under un- unemployment benefits, uh, no Social Security, no Medicare. So uh, it, that's really the bottom line and the crux of the issue. So I, to be frank, I'm not buying into that this job is going to be done by one individual. And as Lou said, he's going to bring subs in from Chicago. That's fine with me, as long as those subs are registered. Uh, What these guys do is then they send their employees 1099s at the end of the year, and these guys have to come up with all their own self-employment tax. Uh, You know, there's a fine line between whether you're a subcontractor, it's not a fine line between whether you're a subcontractor or you're an employee of uh, the, the National Labor Relations Board, as well as the IRS, has pretty firm rules on that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing them now, but if you control what that individual does on a daily basis, you direct his work, and he shows up on your job at specific times where he's directed by you, he's an employee, he's not a subcontractor. You know, I'm, I'm not going to follow this guy around, and I don't think Lou is either. But it's this seems to be a pretty blatant example of what I just discussed. So, so it seems like, uh, I guess it's none of our business whether he pays it under the table or not, but they need all to be registered. That's correct. And the question, and the question is, how do we ensure that the subs are registered can we i don't I, i'm just hypothetically saying that well, sure we can we can we can we can sure we can we see it from the paperwork you know that dn and joe um, do the contract for registration um that's all we're waiting for on this job is, is to get the subs registered uh, and with that um they should be able to move on with this project Okay, are, are they are they registered? No. Oh, okay. So we need to get them registered. And right. And once that's done, I say we can approve it, or we can approve it on, on that with that basis. Mm-hmm. Any other discussion? Do we want to approve the project before we see that registration? Or do we want to wait wait a month? Let's get an opinion from everybody. I think we should always wait until they're registered before we give a permit, because that's that's the only leverage we have. If we give them a permit, we might never see them again. If I move, we table this till next month. That's fine too. Larry. Yes. Pete. Aye. Uh, Ken. Aye. John. Yes. Joy. Yeah. Joe. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're, the next item is 2914 Lakeshore Drive. Uh, I'm going to turn, I'm just going to make the request and then I'll turn it over to Bob uh, because it's a job that my company is doing. Uh, the work is not going to start until October 1st. The homeowner changed their mind as far as the timetable. So uh, I, w- my company is asking for an extension of that permit so that the time frame will be the same. It's just that the start date is October 1st instead of uh, the May 1st that we had on there. So probably that. Okay. All right, did we get this permit application? Yeah. Yeah, it was approved um, months ago. Okay. That sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. 
That's okay. 2914 there. Is this the one with the with the elevator? Right. Yes, it is, Joe. Okay. Yeah, that was you can look it up. That was approved, like uh, Lou said a while ago. So all you're looking for is an extension, correct? Right. It, the, 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 the project hasn't been started. It's going to start. We were going to start much earlier, and then the homeowner decided that they didn't want to start until October 1st. So what that would do. I'll make a motion to approve the extension. Second. How long is it for? Six months, three months. I was supposed to start in May, so it's six months. Roll call, I'll speak. Aye. I'm an aye. Ken. Aye. John. Aye. aye. Joy. Aye. Joe. Aye. We're approving for six months, is that correct? Yeah. I think six months is reasonable. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> um, next is uh, 2600 uh, Bell Plain Trail here where there's a um, exceeded coverage. Um, and we have uh, um, talked and worked with uh, the, the resident um, and she has uh, presented a uh, plan that was sent to everybody again a few days ago, um, substituting um, half of uh, a, the driveway um, to get below 35% on her uh, massive lot. So, Lou, this is, this is an attempt to rectify the situation with the patio that got put in illegal. Is that right? right. Okay, yes. so patio in without a permit, got a citation for that, no daily citations because we hadn't passed that policy yet. And so this is going to actually fix that coverage issue on that lot. That's correct, Bob. There's a circular driveway, which the homeowner doesn't like. So she's going to take that driveway completely out and then just put a short driveway from the street to the garage. And what that will do is bring the, everything on that lot into compliance under the 35%. Um, so as, as you said and, and Lou did, it's a, it rectifies everything that there was a problem with. And she did get a fine when she did the original work. So there aren't any other outstanding violations on that property now? No. This is not like that. Looking at the uh, unpaid list here, there's a 2600 uh, Bell Plain, 2600-2602 not paid, issued on April 8th. I'm all right. You know what? I will... I will call her. I was not aware that it was not paid. Oh. My discussions with her were <laughs> assuming that the fine was paid. I will I'll call her today. Uh, yeah. there's, there's, another, there's another one on December 14th. December 14th. And what was the other one, Pete? Um, was that the fence? April 8th. Okay. So April 8th and December 14th. I will call her this afternoon after our meeting. And and Larry, with this one, I again I don't know. I don't have a copy of this permit. Maybe that's what we're talking about now. But with this permit, if she's gonna take out the driveway and put in a new driveway, I think we probably need a street cut permit. Uh yes, she would need that or Joe, that's correct. So this let's not vote on this. Let's get the street cut permit in. I'll call her about the fines. I don't know that she's ready to do this work right away, and I'll make sure that she has a proper application in. Uh, this was really sent to us as more of a review. Uh, Lou, isn't that your read on this? That's probably what we have. Thanks, Mark. Right. So that if this would be amenable or acceptable to the building commission, that she rectify the situation. I'm going to say if if you guys agree with that, I'm going to tell her today. She got you have to pay the two fines and then send a, a permit request in 
for this work. Okay, I can I can just talk a lot more. Can you hear me there? I can't hear you, Pete. Regarding the, the violations themselves, um, the initial citate the initial citations were for a hundred dollars, but there were for um, um, situations that our daily fines are applied. Now with this patio, this patio has been in for a number of months. The fence was in for a number of months. Uh, we need to come to some resolution as to the total value of these fines. Otherwise, there's no sense us having a prescription in the ordinances that say there's daily fines. These have been in existence. Uh, the violation has been in existence for one of these since December 14th. So we need to know how to handle this. We, we did just ask that uh, policy on the daily fines that we will ask me before. So I think her violation took place before that. Uh, I know there was some provision for daily fines in the ordinances. Not very well spelled out. I think we haven't spelled out now. So my, my suggestion is daily fine should start going forward before we pass that. Any discussion from anyone else? Well, I just have a comment that says I thought it was very clear what the daily fines apply to, apply to any any violation in existence from the day it was started. To the day it was rectified. I don't know what the confusion is, but if the ordinance has been changed, then I shut up the law. Yeah, no, the ordinance wasn't changed. We passed, we passed a resolution, and basically it involved notification of the violator to let them go up there. It gave me 10 days to correct the situation, too, because none of that was at the ordinance as they stood. So that was it. I don't agree, but that's the way the resolution went. The December 14th citation, number one, needs to be paid, but they did correct that. They did move the fence. I don't know if it was in within 10 days or not. I would have to go back and look. Lou and I went over and met with her and explained the whole situation. Has the issue with the, has the, issue with the play, playhouse been resolved. Yes. So it's no longer too high? No. The grade was changed to accommodate the ordinance. Grade? Pardon me? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, what was changed to accommodate? The, the grade. The, the, what put it over the eight on one side, let's call it the, the south west side the grade was high enough where it met the ordinance on the northeast side there was a drop off in the land which added i think it was like Lou, correct me if i'm wrong probably 18 inches to uh the height of the structure so the solution was is that she would grade the yard to be flat, and then that would put her in compliance with the height restriction. It wasn't a question of, you know, the steep slope ordinance. It was more or less a, a low area in the yard that was on the northeast side, or pardon me, north, yes, east side of the structure. I don't know if that makes sense to everybody or not. I can't hear you, Pete. The definition of the front yard is uh, a line extending across the front portion of a building from edge to edge and anything that exists uh, between that and the property line is called the front yard so 
the fence, which is closest to the um, closest to the Long Beach Community Center, is more than four feet, uh, and it is in the front yard. Now, I, I don't know how we want to handle that, but the issue becomes one of how we define these things and the special uh, situations we have with um, um, placing fences in front yards. It seems to be sort of a pandemic around here to put fences around everything. But the front yard, as I said, and the rear yard has a similar definition. You extend the line across the, the back of the building, that becomes the rear yard. So I need to bring that to everybody's attention. I don't know if anybody wants to raise the issue with the, front, with the fence in the front yard, but as I see it right now, that fence closest to the community center is greater than four feet and it's in the front yard. Any other comments or discussion? Uh, this, so I get one, one second, Larry, please. Can you hear yeah, me? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was just looking to everything again. Now, 13 says something about the driveway. Did we ever get anything in writing from them? I, I can't find anything. I've looked, I've got a lot of older stuff for these people. But was there a new permit ever issued? No. As, Joe, as I mentioned earlier in the discussion, there is no permit for this. What they were asking for was that we review it as to whether or not this would satisfy the building commission as far as lot coverages. It would rectify the problem with the lot coverage with the tennis court or whatever was put in back. Uh, isn't isn't the there was no per I'm sorry. Larry, I'm sorry, but I, I just want to make, get some clarity here. There's there's one property that's 2600. Am I correct? That's the property on the corner. Right. And there's, a, there's another property next door. I don't believe that property is 2600. And no, I think it's 2602, or I'm not sure what the address is. And I think I, that is a property that has the tennis court. Right, and that's that's the issue that I just made a mistake on the address. It's the old Kelly house where the tennis court was in the circular driveway. That so, is sorry, what sorry. the proposal is, is to uh, rectify the coverage issues on that parcel. Okay, with, with, and that property is 2602 and they never submitted a permit or anything. They just asked if, if what, what could be a solution. Am I correct? That's right. They just sent this and said, will this satisfy the building commission? And that's something that, that was never shared with the building commission, correct? It's being, it, we're sharing it with you now. That's why it's not okay, the agenda. Okay, no, no, Larry, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to understand. All right, thank you. Yeah, this isn't a permit. It really doesn't require a vote. This this was information only so that everybody would understand. And if you don't have a copy of what she sent in, I will forward it to everybody this afternoon after the meeting. So you guys can take a look because this doesn't really require a vote. It was more or less just a question to us. I'd like to go okay. back. I'd like to go back to the issue of citations. I want to make sure that our citation, when we issue one, that on the printed citation, it states what the obligations are of the uh, homeowner, uh, and that is, you've got ten days to pay this. Uh, daily violations will accumulate. Can I be assured that that's what the citations say? Uh, Lou, did they print you tickets with that on there? Yeah, we, we designed the uh, citation. I can't hear you, Pete, or Lou. We designed the citation uh, December, or January, or something like that. Um, and uh, it was 
Wir dürfen es ja nicht auf den Tag schreiben, wenn wir die Staaten haben. But they do get a registered letter that comes out from the attorney. Okay. So that they can see it to the side. That's just all problem. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, does the citations. Does the citation say that daily fines will accumulate? Does it specifically say that? It says that, quote, well, you are in violation of the above named ordinance. The list of fine occurs on a daily basis until the issue is resolved. You may pay the fine as long as you put credit for bucks, money through credit. You must pay the above fine for or here for the the date below. And in this case, uh, 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 it's September uh, 8th, which is the uh, second Wednesday um, of the month, um, roughly three months um, from when the date was written. Um, the, uh, uh, sorry, the board is very important for which is kind of a small point. So, given that, why do we need a resolution? Why do we need separate letters to be my boss? Why do we need to do any of this? It's there. If they don't pay it, then the process for us to be to be in the court process has some specific dates for the thing to serve. Instead of us always having to go back and say, please do this, please do that. That's what, that's what these things are supposed to do. It's good to know if I get a fucking ticket in Chicago. I could pay it. Who be sending me mail calls? You know? Why don't we just do it? This, you know, this thing has been going on since December. And this person has been defined in several instances. Just put stuff in and you want to call them out. Now, basically, let him off. Let him I don't know if anybody is. It was a big accumulation of funds. We have to clearly lay it out on the citations themselves. Do you want to be on that? No. I'm tired of going through the same stuff over. Okay, I agree, Pete. Lou, isn't yeah. there on the citation itself, you put a court date, correct? Which is the second Tuesday? Wednesday, correct, yeah. Or Wednesday. So that, it, Pete, that's really what the enforcement action is. If they don't pay their fine by that second Wednesday, then they would be included in whatever traffic tickets and whatever else go to the court. And, uh, Unfortunately, Chris isn't here. That I I don't know how the police get their tickets taken care of if they go through the fine bureau, which is the town clerk, and then that is sent sent to Chris. Once we issue the citation, the enforcement of that citation moves to my understanding is moves to the fine bureau, which is the town clerk, and our enforcement action was to list the court date which Lou now puts on the citation, or the citation has a spot for him to do that. And if the citation isn't paid by then, it should be in the system. If it's not getting there, I don't know where that ball is being dropped. If it's in the clerk's office, or is it between, because the, the clerk gets a copy, Deanna acknowledges the copy of the, the citations when they're written. And most of the time you guys see that, and she will, send us an, uh, a copy, or not a copy, a notice that the citation has been paid. Uh, she lists the citation number. I think she also sends a copy of the citation uh, with the paid stamp on it. Uh, those that don't get paid uh, must be falling, it, it must be, there must be a failure at the Fine Bureau. The Ordinance Violations Bureau is, is one of the ordinances in our town ordinances. It applies to specific violations and it has a limit of 250 hours. And, and so, first, the first check should be that the building codes do not fall under the Ordinance Violations Bureau. Um, 
so that when the debate finishes, the tutor can be challenged. The, the process that the clerk's office has is that they get a copy of the citation. This is the way it's supposed to work. They get a copy of the citation, and then they pass it on to the uh, attorney after X number of days when it's not paid. And then the attorney is to take it to court. Um, whether we talk about 10 days or se September, I don't know what the date is, but that's the general process. Right. And the ordinance, uh, and the ordinance itself says this is how the line finds are calculated. It says from the day of violation till the day is corrected, daily fine will accumulate. So yet we have never applied a daily fine to anybody that I know. Everybody pick on the bus and walk away. No matter what kind of stunt they pull, no matter what they do, they bring in these terrible streets, not crafting on nothing. So we either are going to solve this or get it off the books because I'm tired of it. I think we've uh, applied it to two situations 1906, which was right on his um, We had to sell it. And um, we put uh, the, the uh, I forget the numbers. And then there's uh, one that's still in settlement on Indy. Um, with the that more that's still in settlement. It would it um more than a day's fine um, from that situation most the seller. It, it's nice that we're moving in that direction, but we need something specific that says this is what you do. This you know, you set this up uh, at least three times. All the responsibilities seem almost to be sure or ignore it or something. They need to be processed. Or well, what's the sense of doing? It's wasting our time. So what do we need to do to get this done and clear this So Pete, I think that it, it starts with the clerk's office. They have to forward. Once we write the ticket and the copy goes to the clerk, we're pretty much out of it. Then it's the 10, if that fine isn't paid within 10 days, the clerk should advance that to the, the to the attorney for enforcement. And I think that's why Lou that's why Lou puts the court date on there. I agree. So where are they? All I see is not paid, not paid, not paid. All sorts of things. How many are in court? How many are in court? Well, they should they should all be in court because if they're not paid, that's what the, the I mean, I'm not the town clerk, obviously, and none of us are. But those citations should be moved after 10 days right to, to Chris Willoughby. And, and uh, I think somebody in his office handles that monthly court date. And if you're not there or you decide not to protest it or whatever, then it's a, a, a I don't know what the term is. Somebody who's a lawyer here. John, you know what the All term is. judgment. You can get a judgment without having a trial. Right. So, Pete, that, I think that's where the, the failure is. We issue the citations, but we're not the enforcement end of it, unfortunately. Why don't I do this? Why don't I talk to Chris Willoughby and I'll talk to the clerk's office. We'll see if I can't figure out where the system's breaking down and see if we can get corrected. I think that's the right thing to do. We, 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 need, to, we need to be very specific. Uh, we're calculating the daily time and the start. Larry? Yeah. I just ask you a question. I'm trying to get it clear. So 2602 Bell Plain, I know I know the property. Now are, are we expecting them to submit a building permit for the tennis court? Well, what, what are we expecting them to do? Because they we're expecting them, we're expecting them after discussion today to submit a permit to bring the the lot. Well, let, let's let me rephrase that. We're expecting them to submit a permit to remove the driveway and put a smaller driveway in. And I think there was some other removal of a walkway. In in doing that. 
that will bring the property into compliance with the with the coverage rules. Uh, that's what we're, I'm expecting from them. Larry, they, they built the tennis court and they've never gotten a permit for that. Wouldn't they have to submit a permit for, for assessor's purpose only or anything that they should submit a permit for the tennis court? I, you know what, Joe, to be frank, I'm, I was not around at that point in time. I don't know what was submitted or what was not submitted. I don't know if Lou or somebody else can speak to that. Personally, I, I, I'm usually pretty good with all this. I've never seen a permit for, for the tennis court for 2602 Bell Plain. All right, so what do we want to ask them to do? To submit a permit? But for the tennis court, as well as this proposal that to bring themselves into coverage, I couldn't hear. You guys have to speak into a microphone, or it's not going to get. We can't hear you. We got two permits at the same time. I believe it was for example, uh, one was for the fence in the rear of the, the yard, um, and the other was for um, um, some patio stone work to correct some kind of great problem they had come up 2606, which turned into the tennis court. So technically, we did not have um, that issue for the um, tennis court. And, and I think Lou just pointed something out that I'm looking at. We probably should get it right. I believe that property that we're talking about is 2606, not 2602. All right, well, we, we need some direction. I, I don't want to continue for another 20 minutes on this same thing with no. So what what does the building commission want Lou and I to do? Well, right now all you've got is a site plan review for the removal of the driveway, right? Yes. Well, given that, I'll just use the words a site plan review. I don't think would they pay three fifty for a site plan review. I think it was just communication, but I haven't seen the site plan review. Right. There there is no there there was no site plan review fee yes. paid nor a permit asked for. They simply sent a drawing to Lou and myself, and I think Chris, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look at the email with the proposal that would this resolve the situation with the uh, lot coverage? That's the, re that's the only reason it's, it was brought up today, because it was for informational purposes only. I will send everybody a copy of it, and I will explain to them, number one, that they have to file for a permit, which I think they understand. And then number two, anything else that you guys want me to, or Lou and I to do, just give us some direction right now as to what you want us to do. Larry, I think the good starting point would be the permit for the tennis court so we could evaluate and then we could go from there. All right, anything else? All right, so we'll ask them for the permit for what they've asked us to review, as well as a permit for the tennis court. Is that what everybody's agreeing on? All right, let's move on. 2522 Oriole Trail. Uh, they want to add a 750 square foot of patio. Lou, you want to uh, run over this one? Sure. Uh, this is a, a, uh, a great big landscaping job. Um, Digital years do not multiply 10,700 square feet. Um, and of course, they're talking about adding uh, somewhere over 1,400 square feet with the patio and uh, outcropping um, egg falls. Um, so there are less than a lot. And they're asking for additional coverage. Did we get a permit from that? Yes, we got it on uh, June 14th. 25 22 or 
Right. Has, has anybody else seen it? Yeah, I have. But I was looking at the jobs for $102,000. All right, I'll, I'll look up the permit right now and I'll share the screen. You just have to bear with me for a minute. So basically, have a non-conforming lot. They're actually asking to increase lot coverage. They need to go to the VZ. We need to turn it down. And then the other question I have on this is: Who are those retaining walls in the side setback? It looks like one, perhaps, could be from a regular property. Then they need to. Uh, then they need to ask for that also. All right, this, this is what the drawing that came with the, the project. I agree with Bob, this has to go to the BZA. Okay, so uh, we're going to deny this permit based on lot coverage. And what was, your, what was the other uh, item, Bob? Retaining wall on the side setback. Retaining wall. In the side setback, <laughs> retaining wall in the side setback, lot coverage, and non conforming lot, right, Lou? Okay. I'll, we'll send that uh, denial out. Okay, next up is in twenty eight, um, let's go back, um, Margaret Smith. There uh, actually um, is a second application here um, regarding um, stairs to be the first situation is uh, citations about uh, shed that uh, is considerably over one percent of their size that they never did um apply for. And they've been cited for that. All right. With that, um, that citation that was before we had the meeting where we came up with the daily fine. Yeah, I think so. It's been a few months. So what direction do you guys want to take on this? I'd like to ask the attorney to send the letter, give it 10 days to correct the problem. Okay. I think, I think they're already uh, trying to correct the problem. They're going to take a foot, foot and a half off the east end of that shed or that. So they're working. Yeah, they're working. On it. If he hadn't done it already, I know he's working on it this last weekend. Well, no. Maybe what we could do is have you step by, give them a little nudge, and if, if that uh, is not corrected, then we send them the letter. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. No idea you were making move to reduce the size of the shed. Yeah. They said they talked to, I don't know if they talked to you or Larry or somebody, but anyway, he was going to knock off a foot, foot and a half of the uh, north and east, east end. Yeah, I did talk to them, John, but it was not specifically about the shed. It was actually about some other items that they were talking about wanting to do. Okay. All right, well, so... Where did the shed go here? What was that? Actually, Yeah. It's definitely there. You you can't see it from the road. Right. It's below. It's below the street. There's there. That house is a a, a three story house. One story or the lowest level is below the street level, 
and the shed is attached to, I just saw it last week for the first time, the shed is attached to the house, the, the first, the lower level, um, yeah. which is why you can't shed. see it. Shed isn't attached to the house, it's about, a, I don't know, a foot or so between the, right. 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 So let's, are, is our decision now that Lou's going to go down, talk to them uh, in keeping with John's discussion that they were going to rectify the, the square footage and uh, then they would have to submit a permit as well because we, am I hearing correctly that we never got a permit application for it? That's correct. Okay. So, so Lou, when you talk to them, number one, if hopefully they're correcting the issue, number two, that they should send a uh, an application in. Uh, this is the one where we got a letter from the homeowner that said they were under the understanding that anything under, I can't remember what it was, was allowed, um, which obviously isn't the case. So does that resolve everybody's issues? Is there a side setback issue on this? How could there not be? No, Pete, there is not. The bottom and the house to the west is split ownership between the two mountains. So when you'll get back to us if the situation is resolved. Yeah. Or actually, if you don't even make it back to us, you can just get a hold of Chris and have him present the letter. And then, and then Larry or everybody, we also have uh, submitted to us on June 17th a permit uh, from them for stairs on the seawall. Right. And none of those permits for stairs on the seawall can be acted on by us until we hear from the DNR. I mean, there, there's no sense in discussing any of them because we require a permit or a letter from the DNR, as we discussed earlier. And without that, as John Coker mentioned, we either change our ordinance so that we don't require a permit or we get some communication from the DNR that says that they're not going to require a permit, that they're, get, that they're approving, approving them blanketly, like the Army Corps of Engineers does. You know, we, we need an answer from the DNR before we can do anything or... As John mentioned, I'm not sure of the whole ordinance process, but there would have to be a change in that ordinance that says that we require a permit. Uh, discussing stairs before that, it's, we're going to have to discuss them again when we find out what they say. I mean, I, I'm not trying to stop anybody from saying or voicing their opinion, but I thought we went over this earlier. And we did. I just wanted to bring that up. Now, before Larry... If it's okay, before we go on to the next issue, uh, going back to the BZAs, uh, we still have, uh, there were three that went to the BZA. We talked about two. And the third one is this one, 2021 Silver Tip, which we received from them on June 30th. If we haven't had time to review it, I can understand that. Or if you want to talk about it, I just wanted to bring that that one up because that's the third one on the BZA. It's at the BZA, Joe, now? No, BZA moved it. Oh, that's the garage. I'm sorry, you're correct. Uh, Lou, we talked about that. Uh, do you have it in front of you, Lou? You can read what the BZA approved? Yeah. I, that's my fault. I didn't put it on the agenda, and I should have. Lou? Yeah, they have an increase in support not to exceed 846 square feet, but increase in bottom, not to exceed 1,300 cubic feet. No part of this line is considered so deep to include any consideration for the regarding any of the sections of the I haven't started building yet, have 
So um, we still have a high question on this building. Um, so it's uh, actually attached to the house. So we'll dive into it. As soon as an accessory gets to the house. They didn't address that at the BCA? No, sir. Oh, for God's so, sake. Sir, both the island and do these people come to us? Yes, they, they came to us. This was probably at least the second, if not the third time. And I sent them, each time I sent them a denial letter that explained exactly what ordinances that they were violating and explained to them that they could go to the BZA. I don't have the copy of that last denial in front of me. I can certainly look it up and then send it off to you guys. Um, well, and regardless of whether we mentioned height, height is an issue. Is that correct, Lou? I'm sorry. Uh, height is definitely an issue. Yeah, it's, it's a, the, the building is, is, a, is at 23 feet high. We'll get all the way out of the max is 18 for a system. It's, it's attached to the house. There's a bridge um, between the two properties. So the question then we can't hear you guys at all. <coughs> so the question is does does it being attached as with by a bridge make it an attached structure? Right. Uh, I think we allow this another situation. Does it? Does that one exist in property? This is a, a, a new structure. So it's different. That was the one on Roslyn Trail, correct, Lou? Right. So it's really not connected to the house. I wouldn't call that a uh, structure. No. It's connected by the way of the Exactly. And not structurally connected. Hey, can I ask you guys again to use a microphone when you speak? We, we can't hear you on the Zoom portion here. Uh, the, the question, uh, Larry, was uh, not a question, but the structure is not structurally connected to the house, it's connected by a walkway. That's so, correct, Ken. So in that uh, case, how could we say the, uh, what do we call it, the uh, addition shed? Uh, the garage. It's a separate entity. It has no physical connection structurally. It doesn't share a wall, doesn't share a common floor. It's merely connected by a sidewalk or, in this case, a a walkway. So I, I don't think there's any argument or misunderstanding there. So two separate buildings. So what, what conclusion did you draw? Well, because it's not physically sharing a wall. I agree. So then, then it's two separate buildings. So that we have a high issue. Then we do have a high issue, is what you're saying. Okay. Well, are you saying that? Yeah, I'm just, that's what I'm trying to see what you're Well, I, I was just focusing on uh, clarification of what the shed is, garage, and it's a garage. Yeah, that was for the accessory building, so. So whatever, uh, whatever can of worms that opens up, that's a different issue, but by definition, it's a separate building. Yeah. I, I believe it. Do you concur with that? The high issue would definitely. So, whatever requirements have to be met because of that, then we can move forward and focus on that aspect of it. And then it becomes one and simple. It's a building, it doesn't meet the requirement. Of an accessory. As an accessory structure, then it has to have that 18 foot, it has to meet that 18 foot requirement. Uh, any discussion on that? 
Yeah. It's a living, it's a living space. So, Larry, I think you're correct. So, whether we told them or not that they have a problem with height, we need to tell them now, and they unfortunately are going to need to go back to the BCA. All right, we'll do that. You could forward a question. I, I didn't hear that one, Ken. I said they could lower it. They could lower their garage and buy convertibles. <laughs> yes. All right. So we'll have to send them the denial, or I'll send them a denial listing the, the uh, height restriction. Anything else on that one? Lou, did I leave any other ones off that we discussed uh, the other day? Uh, hey Lou, you hit the microphone. I, I'm having we're having a hard time hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's what works. Okay, um, 2530 Glendale um, is a, an extensive landscaping job, um, adding, uh, where did it go? Um, some coverage, um, all of which uh, comes, uh, there it is, below um, the, uh, uh, it actually uh, totals up with the, the um, the, the additional deck and patio and walkway, um, the total comes to um, 30%. Um, so this is allowable under the coverage um, ordinance. Any other discussion? Entertain a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to approve. Second. Bob? Uh, Larry? Yes. Yes. I'm Annette. Yes. yes. Ken? John? Yes. Joy? Yeah. Joe? Yes. <laughs> Two in one day. Uh, Lou, have you got any others on there that I've left off? I got one more. Okay. Uh, 2507 Shorewood. This is a, a property that's uh, been installing a swimming pool um, and uh, they uh, decided they wanted a, a little more deck space um, uh, around the pool um, and a pergola on that deck space um, with the additional coverage um, on this deck addition to the pool deck. Uh, they come to 31.4% of coverage and um, they're uh, looking to put a pergola um, on top of that deck space, so it's not additional coverage to the 2000 that they're adding. Anybody have any comments or discussion about this one? When did, when did we receive that one? June 27th. That's it. I haven't had a chance to review it, but that doesn't mean anything. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, uh, it'd be um, growing. Well, the original calculations were done by Caribbean Pool. Um, this addition um, to the, the pool decking was done by um, Rowan Landscape. Correct. Well, it's being installed. Mm -hmm. It's currently being installed. And they want to put a deck around the pool. And the permit is for the pool? No, we approved a permit for the pool long ago. How long ago was that? Uh, it looks like Feb 17 is the last time we, we, we received the application for Feb 17. So, so the lender was kind of unclear whether the pavers were 
existing or not. We confirmed that they were existing. Um, but apparently they're still above, or no, they're not existing, but it turns out that uh, their coverage is still below 35%. Yes, that's correct, Bob. Okay. Both you and I had questions about whether or not that patio or the pavers or whatever was existing or not. She confirmed that they were not, and with the additional coverage of the patio, the pergola doesn't come into play because it's on top of the patio. Uh, but with the additional coverage, they're still under the 35%. I'll make a motion to approve. Sir. Any other, Any other discussion? Vote, Larry? Yes. 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 John? Yes. Joy? Yes. Joe? No. <laughs> You're killing me, Joe. I mean, I I was just not happy with I'm looking I'm looking at this list quickly. I'm just not happy with um, this type of talk and this That's all I've got. Okay. Uh, next item is item number sixteen. The electrical inspector, uh, this came up when I was uh, in the hospital uh, a couple of times with Lou. I have since talked to the LaPorte County people. Uh, Chris has not been involved in this. He's been on other things. So I guess let's start off with the, there's some code issues that our, the town of Long Beach says that we are going to adhere to X code. LaPorte County says that they're using a different code and uh, there are some differences in what is uh, allowed or approved in one over the other. Uh, the second item is that LaPorte County does, Electrical does not do a final inspection. It's something that we always did out here, but they don't do that. Um, the other item, the next item was that the number of inspections. They do a rough in inspection, and Lou, I forget what they call the second one, but it's not a final inspection. Yeah, the second one is a rough in inspection. Okay, I don't know, I've got them mixed up then. Um, the, the last item is the amount of permit fees that we collect. Uh, Deanna has, has had some conversation back and forth with me. She's concerned that we collect these fees. We pay Laporte uh, $250 inspection fees, and then the other money sits there in the coffers at, at Long Beach. Um, those are the items that we've had issues with. Lou went over and met with the people at the Laporte County Building Department uh, they have called. They called me last or the week before last, and wanted Lou and I to come over and meet with them. Lou was going on vacation, so I let them know. So that's still hanging in the air. I guess the bottom line is, is we really don't have much control over what the electrical inspectors do or don't do. Uh, when when this came up, when Leroy retired, there were two candidates for the electrical inspector. One was the guy from Michigan City, Francis Rooney. And the other was Dave Wright, who was a retired journeyman electrician. The town council, outside of us, or input from us, hired um, Francis Rooney. He, I think on his first day, he quit. So then Chris Willoughby went to the town or the LaPorte County and came up with, uh, I think they called an interlocal agreement to where they would then inspect our jobs for a set fee. Um, I think it would be much easier if we had our own electro electrical inspector, more control over what's going on here, and less confusion with the electrical. And Lou can speak to that because he talks to these guys out in the field. Less confusion between the electrical contractors and what's expected of them, as well as access to uh, inspections on a timely basis. Um, I have spoken to the other candidate, Dave Wright. 
and he is still interested in the in the position if it's offered or slash open um the the last hire that francis rooney the guy from michigan city the town council decided to pay him 35 dollars an hour instead of what leroy was getting was he was taking 90 percent of the permit application fees in the town retained 10 percent uh you know if so i guess there's two issues one do we want to hire our own inspector the second issue is compensation how how would that we would we would do that that's actually up to the town council not us uh, on both counts the town council would have to hire an electrical inspector or approve who we would recommend um and then the second issue would be the town council would do some type of negotiation as far as if they did decide to hire someone, what the compensation would be. Uh, Lou, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. Well, with the process that we're doing now with Bourbon County, we we add about half a dozen steps into the whole inspection process, and we don't actually get a final inspection. Um, which I've, I've studied and learned about. Um, really, all it's done is they check the office for a, a ground and they check all the switches. Um, but that's what they were used to do. Um, it wasn't, uh, in, in my purview of, of what was required in a final inspection, it was an electric final inspection. Um, and I would be the first to tell you that. that um, this has become a laborious process here with um, Lake County because they continually deny us by the fact that they haven't received an application yet from the from whoever. Uh, but uh, we had a good thing when we had Leroy going, and I think that's the direction we should go back to. Uh, any? Uh, you, got, you guys have got to hit a microphone. Okay, uh, Larry, just one thing. Uh, would we, or we should be looking for an electrical inspector that, inspector that is a National Electric Code uh, qualified. Uh, there is a uh, organization of electrical inspector, inspectors that uh, they keep current on the code, they're tested, they're state certified. If you want to get the best bang for your buck, I think, and protect the public here, you should be looking for somebody with a state certification in the as an electrical inspection inspector. I myself I uh, wouldn't qualify. Uh, I'm an industrial electrician, so you do have to have somebody that's knowledgeable with uh, residential codes and so forth, and keep current with it. Just a suggestion. Okay, any other discussion? Comments? I, I couldn't hear you, Bob. I don't know, but I can certainly inquire as to whether or not he does. Any other comments? If we find out that he does have that certification that we recommend to the town council that they hire him. Okay. Larry, it, 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 I, I don't understand the logic behind not doing a final inspection. <laughs> we, Pete, we don't either. Uh, it's to me, it's absurd. That's, I mean, that's the end product. If you only and, do a rough in inspection, you're, and you're you're saying, and you're saying Laporte County does not do that? No, they do not. Then I don't know why. I would, I would think that would be the thing that would put us at the most risk as a, as a, as a town and not doing final inspection. I mean, how crazy can that be? I, I just recommend that we, if, we, if we have somebody who follows our rules and they would they apparently would have no problem using the rules and the, and the IRC codes or whatever they are that we have in place. He has no problem following that, right? No, not at all. And, but, but the Port County does not follow those rules. 
to the team. Uh, I, I don't want to speak for Lou, but there was some discussion about supposedly we're the only entity in the entire state that has issues with the codes. I don't see that when I read through the code. We abide by the state, IRC, the National Electric Code is a sub-function of the NFPA. Um, and my understanding is that's what we use. If that's not the case, then we've got another issue, which is would have to be discussed, I suppose, with the APC. But my understanding is exactly like you, Pete, you know, the liability comes in the finished product. And it's no secret that, number one, I'm on the fire department. And I would suggest to you that probably well over 60 percent of the fires in the United States end up with a or residential fires, excuse me, end up with an electrical uh, problem as the cause. So I don't know about our liability. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer. You know, I could ask John Coker, but I don't know if he'd want to say anything. I'm my ultimate goal is is obviously to make. And I think our, our job as the building commission is to make sure that the codes are being followed and that things are inspected according to what they should be. And I think electrical is a very important part of that. Um, sure. I, I think that when we uh, recommend to the council, Mr. Blake, to make it very clear that the uh, one of our major considerations is, is the final inspection. If it's not done, we should do risk of it. Come on. Is there a second for my motion to recommend to the town council that they hire Mr. Wright if he has a certification? I'll second that. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Larry? Yes. Right. I'm a yes. Yes. John? Yes. Joy? Yes. Joe? Yes. So Larry, <laughs> that's you true. Can you can find out, Larry, uh, this weekend. I can put that on the agenda for Monday's town council meeting. You know what, uh, Bob? I'll find out after the meeting. I'll, I'll give him a call. Uh, uh, okay, the last thing that I have here is the uh, floodplain requirements. Uh, Bob had dropped off some information that was sent to the to his attention at the town, and I had received uh, some information prior to that from FEMA uh, through the state on the floodplain changes in our map, uh, our designation in certain floodplain areas. Uh, what they are requiring for us to maintain floodplain insurance for our residents without penalty is that our ordinance must conform to all these new items. Uh, this is for information purposes. It's not, we don't require a vote or anything, but I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on. I have been and continue to attend webinars on enforcement uh, and uh, what the rules are as far as what's being changed. Pete and I, gosh, Pete, probably what, three years ago, went down and attended a, a seminar in the state building on the floodplain. Most of the floodplain information that we get is for rivers uh, in smaller areas. Lake Michigan has a whole different uh, set of rules. It's a, a coastal area. They did change our zone to a more restrictive zone uh, because of the coastal flooding rules, which basically means the, the wave action. So we're working through that. And if I can understand exactly where our floodplain ordinance is, I will send that to the state and ask them to review it to make sure that we're compliant. Uh, I don't know, Pete, if you have anything you want, might want to add to that, just based on what your knowledge is from when we went down there. 
Well, uh, we, when we went down there, it was basically for information purposes. Right. We didn't have any option to make any changes. Uh, it basically, you either you either accept the floodplain ordinance or the floodplain rules, or you don't get floodplain insurance for the community. That's you correct. By the, and you abide by the floodplain rules, or you are eliminated. And that means that anybody with floodplain, or nobody can apply for floodplain insurance. Um, and it's not just the lakefront, but back there, Lake Claire, right. uh, that, that area is also floodplain area. So all we can do, uh, I guess we have to formally adopt any new rules of the FEMA, um, or we forfeit our right to do flood, which flood insurance program, which is... That's correct, Pete, and, and that's what I want to send down to them. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what we have written and if there's any conflict with what we have written and what the new rules are. I suspect that there are some minor changes that would have to be made, but uh, I would want them to review our ordinance and then we pass it by Chris if they want to make changes and then go through the APC and to the town council. But that's exactly right. If we're not compliant, our homeowners will not be afforded flood insurance. I don't recall us having a specific ordinance. We just adopted the flood, the FEMA floodplain rules. Um, and that, so I don't think there's an ordinance to say just a resolution or something adopting the FEMA, the FEMA rules that was basically yeah, our 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 rule, our pardon me, our ordinances slash rules that apply to the floodplain is uh, section one fifty five. I don't know, it's about twenty pages long, uh, and I'm trying to compare each item that we have. And our reference is is that we are abiding by the state rules, um, but I don't didn't want to send the whole ordinance down there and have them tell us, look, we're not going to write your ordinance for you. I just want to see if there's just a few minor changes that we need to make and then send it off so that we are compliant. That's really all I had under that, unless anybody has any other comments. Um, being none, anybody else have any commission wow. business? I see we've got two people on here. I don't know if we've answered your, Mr. McCann, and I can't read your name on down there. Mr. Funkhauser uh, and Mr. Rizvi. Anybody, you, are you guys here for a specific permit that we didn't hit? Yeah, do you mind if I speak? Sure. Um, yeah, we had um, submitted um, another review for a project at 2006 Somerset. Um, Mr. McCann is the homeowner um, of this property, um, and it had already gone through the process once, and I believe that it was rejected. We had made modifications to the plan before we submitted for full construction documents. We wanted to verify with, um, with the BZA that it's going to be compliant before we put all the time and money into that. Um, and then we had sent um, all the paperwork in for that. Uh, I believe by the deadline that it was required. To who? Yeah. Deanna Carlson. Do you not have that in your? She right. She's the clerk. Right. Uh, that I tell you what, if it, Lou is. Are those the drawings that you gave me when we met Tuesday? Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, is that the only copy, or do you have one, or is this everybody? Did everybody get one? Uh, let me look and see if Deanna sent this stuff out. Uh, Derek, when did you say you sent it to her? She received it on. Hang on, I'll give you an exact date in a moment. Yep. Hang on, I'm just checking with my person. Sure. Yanni? 
So Larry, I'm seeing an email that you sent in response to this. Your comments were, lot is not conforming, 10,700 square feet. Coverage numbers need to be spelled out as to what they include. Height the building is over the allowed 33 feet for drawing A 1.2. They show 33 foot height, but it's not to the ridge. The chimney height would require a variance 154.709. That's that was your comments when you looked at it. Okay, did Derek is that? Did you revise those drawings since then? Well, the architect has revised them, and this is what I've been trying to get a clear answer on. That's been challenging. The way the, the zoning, the way the code reads with the maximum building height, there's like two. It seems like there's two different ways that it can be interpret it and we're not trying to be nitpicky about it we just want to sure. make sure that we're in compliance with it we've already changed it once um and we've been advised to go ahead and go in for full permit and we said well we want to make sure that we are going to nail sure. it this time. and when i look at the when i look at the zoning or, or the code it, there's two different variations of what determines the maximum building height it's either the lowest pre-construction grade elevation at the perimeter of the proposed platform, building platform, or the highest pre-construction grade elevation. And then there's two things that define it. Um, it's either 27 feet above the highest pre-construction grade, which we're in compliance with with these new plans. If you look at the back of the, at the rear elevation, we're within, we're below the 27 feet on the rear elevation. And then there's three stories are limited to a maximum of 33 feet above the lowest. So we're a little bit above there, but then the question is, well, half of this house is below construction. It's a, it's a basement. It's got a basement walkout on the front. So because of the pit. So this is what we've been trying to like lock in and the architect has been having a hard time um, getting it fine tuned to be in compliance. So, um, well, there, there's a couple of issues. 33 is the maximum height on a three-story home. Uh, and when, when I look at your drawings, you've got the 33 mark, but it's actually below the ridge line. So that's I, there, there's no dimension that shows me how far below the ridge line it is, but it would have to be at the ridge line, the 33 feet. So that's that's assuming that we're treating this as a three-story building, and we're using that metric of from the proposed grade to the highest point. Right. So then the other question is: the third story is technically like a story and a half. It's dormers, and do you consider that to be a full story? Because we it, it, what we have it's thirty-three feet is the maximum. Okay. Is, is what you what you have that's what the rule states if you wanted to do something over the 33 feet from the lowest grade you would have to go to the bza uh, okay. the other issue is the lot size the 10,700 square feet is uh below the required 12,000 square feet uh -huh. and that is considered a non-conforming property okay. so then that means that you would have to go to the BZA for a non-conforming lot that's only 10,700 square feet. Now, there is a, an ordinance that's being considered that uh, there are some changes to that, but I don't know that it would help you in the, th in the, th in the I know it won't help you in the 33 feet, whether or not it would help you in the, the smaller lot size, I guess I would ask Bob to maybe give us some input on that. Um, and uh, what was the other thing, Bob? I don't have my note in front of me. Chimney height. Oh, the chimney, chimney height. height. You know, we, we have a, uh, I think that chimney, Derek, I, I don't remember what the height was, um, but the chimney uh, is allowed to be, by ordinance, I, I I don't have it off the top of my head. I think it might be uh, according to code for chimneys, which is two feet higher than ten feet away. Right, two feet. Yeah, it reads two feet above the required building height. So right. we can, so that needs to be at thirty five. So you're saying that needs to be at thirty five. Right. 
Okay. But I think actually it, the biggest issue for you guys is going to be the non-conforming lot. Um, okay, can you speak to me a little bit about that? What needs to happen in order to determine what? what so our the the ordinances require twelve thousand square foot lot. Anything below that is considered a non-conforming lot. In order to build on a non-conforming lot you have to have a variance from the BZA. So if you're going to go to the BZA for that, let's say you want to maintain, you want to keep exactly what you have, that it's over 33 feet, that the chimney extends higher. Uh, you, you would get, you would be denied here. And then you would go to the BZA. And my suggestion to you would be to ask for a variance for everything that you want to have higher than the 33 feet, the chimney height above the allowed two feet and the lot coverage, or pardon me, the lot size of uh, under 12,000 square feet. Is there any factors that come into play given the fact that there's a pre-existing home on this lot? Like how does that? Well, are you, are you demolishing the home? Yeah, yeah, there's an example yeah, there and we're... Unfortunately, when you demolish the home, then it reverts back to new construction. Uh, and I, I'm going to ask Bob uh, if he can give us a little input on that new ordinance to see whether or not that would help you. Bob, do you have any uh, input on that? Yeah, Hit your microphone, Bob. Uh, yeah, I think it got sent to the town council, um, and it's the non-conforming ordinance. And basically, it allows it allows construct should allow construction on a lot below twelve thousand square feet, provided lot coverage is not an issue. Um, setbacks are all followed. Not right, John. You're not, you sit on that committee too, isn't that kind of the gist? Yeah. But again, that, that's for the council tomorrow or on Monday. Uh, it may or may not uh, have a second reading at that meeting. It might take another month for that second reading, provided it passes at all. So I guess, Derek, what that's going to do for you guys is if 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 that ordinance were to pass, you've, you've knocked one of the issues out, the nonconforming lot. You would still need a variance for the height at 33 feet and then the chimney above two foot above that uh, if you're going to go to the BZA without that ordinance having been passed I would suggest that you include the non-conforming lot in your request and if it gets to the point where you're before the BZA and that has already passed the town council that would be a moot point Okay. Well, we were, the intention has always been to basically build something that is not going to require a variance, which we got pretty close. We're about a foot too high. So I think it's a simple thing to, to modify that, that plan. Okay. We just need to deal with now the non-conforming lot issue, which I didn't know at all about, um, but we'll have to figure that out. So, Okay. Uh, and as I said, if, if you're going to go to the BZA, include everything, even if you do make modifications. So just in case it doesn't work for you and, and Mr. McCann, that uh, you're, you're before them. You know I mean, if you can bring it down to the 33 and, and cut the chimney down, you'll be fine. Then the only issue is the nonconformance. Okay. 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 Right. Jim, did you want to say anything? Whoa. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, guys. And, and you know, you can call me. Uh, I was out of commission for a while, but you can call me. My number's listed on the website. Okay. If, if you have anything else, and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. That would be very helpful. I appreciate okay. it. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else out in the public comment? area being none any comments from the commission didn't hear you john what was that yeah i didn't hear you john 
Okay, second. Uh, roll call. All favor say aye. 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 Thanks.